Hey, my name is John McLeod and uh, 39 years old, born and raised in Richmond Hill, Georgia, which is just south of Savannah, Georgia. Uh, spent most of my, well, all my early years there, uh, went through uh, and all the way through the same school system. My mom was a school teacher and my dad sold real estate. Um, yeah, had a great upbringing. Uh, man was very, uh, my dad would say privileged. Uh, very fortunate to have the, the childhood that I did uh, and just could have, yeah, and had anything that I wanted uh, or needed or anything like that. Um, and when I was probably in middle school, uh, middle school was probably the first year that was the hardest on me. Seventh grade was very difficult uh, and that was the first year that I got caught smoking weed um, and it probably started dabbling in some drinks before that, whether it be a celebratory thing or, or just, you know, a normalized thing. It was kind of a cool thing to do, so I would say wanting to be in the cool crowd. Um, the circle that I was hanging out with uh, was very influential inside of that. Uh, alcohol took a precedence as well, uh, but I really liked uh, the feeling that, that I got from smoking the marijuana. And so, um, yeah, definitely was one of the things that I pursued, but it was because it was, uh, yeah, it, it was a normal thing inside of my circle of friends. Uh, prescription pills became a thing uh, when I was in high school. Um, and I can remember how benzos would take me to a place where I wouldn't care and so the feeling would go away and so that was easy easy to escape with the benzos and then the pain pills made me sociable uh, and it was you know and very outgoing extroverted inside of uh, the opiate world and so i stayed away from the benzos and and got heavier into the opiates because of and just the way that it made me feel where the benzos would take me like to a place where it slowed me down. But what I found myself doing was, uh, no matter what it was, it was an escape of some sort of substance, right? And so I definitely was starting to experiment with things to get away from my feelings and the emotions. Um, and then of course, when I turned 18, graduated high school, found myself uh, not going to school, barely made it out of high school. Uh, started working in the construction world as we can all imagine what that, you know, looked like, right? I mean, it's a rough, it's a rough environment for sure. And so, um, yeah, definitely uh, everything that I'd struggled with in high school had enhanced at that point in time. When I was about 20 years old, my family was pressuring me, what am I gonna do? You can't be doing this your whole life. You know, uh, I was learning some trades, which later on in life became very beneficial. But I decided to go to school, college, to, you know, kind of take a break from the pressure and just to try and figure out which direction I was going to go. During that time, uh, I had a dog that I started to raise. I had gotten from a puppy in... Uh, And that dog really kind of paved a course for me as far as I love to hunt and fish was a, a thing that I really enjoyed doing. And when I started guiding with my dog and I found a whole new world, it was an exciting world, um, which led me to uh, about a 10 year run from myself and uh, everything around me. So. Uh, I ended up quitting school after a couple years um, and never even got, I don't think I got three hours, three credits while I was in school for almost three years. In fact, the last semester that I signed up for, they returned the tuition check because I didn't even go to class early enough in the semester for them to warrant keeping the funds and so they actually returned the tuition money. So man, in that time, uh, just life was getting harder and harder, but I was enjoying the, the God world with my dog. 
and, um, and getting the time in the outdoors. And so I just kind of pursued that, was making great money. This was pre-2008 um, recession. Um, and so, man, I ended up in Alaska for almost 10 years, uh, South Dakota, uh, and I spent some time in Louisiana, South Florida, uh, would find myself back in Savannah, um, you know, for a couple months out of the year, but I was traveling, living out of a duffel bag. I didn't realize it at the time, but I was staying just long enough in places to where they couldn't figure out who I really was. I would even find relationships in places of people who were they weren't cracking down on the opiates at that point in time, so a lot of people had scripts. I had my own prescriptions as well, uh, but my prescription should last anybody a year, and I was, you know, going through it in about 10 days. Um, I was being prescribed benzos, amphetamines, um, opiates, and um, a lot of them. And. Then I would cultivate relationships with people around the continent, between Alaska, South Dakota. Uh, I'd have people mailing me their prescriptions wherever I was, and so I constantly had a resource for those prescriptions. Prescription drugs became the normal for me, physical dependency on those things. I was still back into the weed, smoking copious amounts, but I was functioning, and I was able to keep a job. I was able to do well. I traveled with my dog. Um, I was able to paint a beautiful picture on Facebook of this glorious life that I got to live. And really, I was just miserable and broken. Um, I was empty. I didn't know what I was going to do. I knew that life wasn't going to last. I uh, found myself uh, divorced, had lost a few jobs, mainly because of the drug use. And I wasn't willing to stop at that point in time. You know, so full circle was um, at about. 2017 so I had been going for about 10 years found myself uh, in South Florida uh, I was on a 15 million dollar sport fishing boat traveling to Abacos the majority of the year and uh, still trying to figure out what I was going to do long term and, and, and my flesh wanted to just go further and further away I was able to climb the ladder wherever I went. I was able to get great positions. Um, and I just always found myself falling in the sweet spot when it comes to the guide world, right? When I say the guide world, hunting and fishing. Uh, I was in the Bahamas at one point, ran into some friends and they introduced me to a girl and um, via FaceTime. And that is the, the girl that I met through that FaceTime is who my wife is today by the grace of God. And I knew early on that I wanted to pursue a relationship with this girl. I, but I'd always pursued women that were out of my league um, because I, want, I, I, didn't, I, never, I never entertained women that were in the same realm that I was. I always was pursuing a notch above and so they, it would last for a little while and then and it would come crashing down. It didn't take long for Chelsea to figure out what was going on. In fact, um, a few weeks after I met Chelsea in person, I found myself quitting my job, moving back to Richmond Hill. And that was when I had the revelation that I had been running from myself for almost 10 years. And everything that I had been running from started crashing down. And when it started crashing down, uh, Chelsea figured out what was going on. She exposed me to my family. Um, man, everything was crumbling. I had started a concrete business when I moved home. Um, it was it was doing well, but man, it wasn't going to last long. Um, so, I, man, I, I submitted myself to to going to treatment. I didn't know what that looked like. I didn't know what it entailed. Um, and I eventually just shut everything down and, and went to treatment. I was supposed to be in a six month program. Uh, 52 days in, I talked myself out of being there and talked my family into coming and getting me. I actually got saved in that program. Uh, it, was not a, it was not a Christ Center facility, it was a secular program. <clears throat> but I know that that's where I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But there wasn't a whole lot of sanctifying going on inside of that, that place just because it was not a Christ-centered. You couldn't talk about scripture, you couldn't talk about Jesus. 
um, you know, there was doorknobs that were higher power. Um, just really struggled through some of that. Left that program early, was about uh, 90 days clean, and I started struggling again. An environment wins 99% of the time every time, and so I had went back to some, some old friends that were good for me early on that ended up not being so good for me later on. Um, just because, man, I, I had to be a teetotaler, you know, where I would, wouldn't dabble in anything, right? I couldn't do anything because it would always lead back to these places that I didn't belong. So after about, I don't know, 120 days, Chelsea put her foot down again. She said, hey, you can have one or the other, but you can't have both. It took me a little while to resubmit. Um, but I did, and when I did, I said, hey, I'll go back to treatment, but it's gotta be a Christ Center facility. I wanna go somewhere I can learn more about Jesus. I wanna go somewhere that I can talk about Jesus. I wanna go somewhere that I can learn the word. Um, I knew that I was hungry for it, uh, but I didn't know how to go about doing it. So she got on the phone and started calling around, like just digging, 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 turning over every stone that she could find, any place that had Christ or faith in it. And somehow she kept landing on S2L recovery. So she made the initial call um, and talked to some of the intake coordinators. And, uh, and next thing I know, I was in the car headed for Tennessee. That was January of 2018. And when I got here, I thought I was just going to do 42 days and, and go on about my way. Um, but it, I hadn't been here long. Shortly after I arrived, like a week or two, I realized that, hey, I wanted, to, I wanted to be a part of what was going on here inside of this ministry, inside of S2L. Um, made a decision early on that I had, you know, uh, very ambitious and uh, you know had had big dreams and um, and I was told pretty quick that you know hey you know settle in you know you're only been here for a couple weeks and we'll see where it goes well that was seven years ago um, and now I'm the admissions director for the facility um, and you know get to be a big part of roping guys in just like I was roped in and man it's one of the most fulfilling things that I've ever got to do outside of raise my kid and be a husband so living the life that we live today my wife and I and, and Jasper our son and we're about to have a second son here in a couple weeks getting to live a life that we didn't even know existed that far uh, exceeds our expectations and what it what it started with was just taking the first move, right? To being able to put yourself in a situation where you can get the help you need. It messes with your man card to know that you gotta separate yourself from the world and put yourself into a treatment facility. Some call it rehab, um, some call it recovery. Whatever it is that you wanna call it, it messes with you. And, and I'm not man enough to do that on my own, but the reality is, you get to separate yourself from the world. And if that's what you need to do so that you can get the help necessary so that you can go home and be the leader of your home that God's called you to be for a, a husband, for your wife, a father for your kids, an employee for your employer, whatever it is that you've been called to do. And if there's something in the way that's keeping you from becoming that man, why not make a move? Why not do something different and, and, and put yourself in a situation where you can get the help needed? There's so many people out there in the world today that have been through what you've been through, maybe not walked in your shoes, nobody's walked in your shoes, but I guarantee you that there's some similarities and stories out there. And there's men that can give you a direction for a solution in what your struggle is. And, and we're all broken, it's a healing process. And what are you willing to do to, to separate yourself from where you are to where you need to be, right? And, and figure out what that needs to look like. Make the call, call us. We have guys that are on call all the time that are willing to talk to you. Um, but make the move, you won't regret it. But just know that you gotta put some work into it. And, and when you put the work into it that's necessary, and the Lord will meet you right where you are, and he'll take you to places you didn't even know existed.